you want out to the engine bay, firewall, wherever you like, and you can start stacking on our blue VNet modules. Every one of the CAN bus systems have terminator caps. Depending on your data logger would determine how this gets installed. On the V300, you have two terminator caps. So one on each side of the main bus. Here's the cable that comes out. Start adding your modules. At the very end, you cap each one. If you fail to do so, you will notice in your data logging systems that you may see flatlining. Data may start to come along and just flatline. That is a result of it losing signal. Without proper termination, it can't communicate correctly. So any one of you guys that have the VNet systems on your vehicle, please make sure it's properly terminated per the instructions. The sportsman's data logger does not have a T. So basically at the end of your daisy chain coming from the data logger, you just have one cap. Make sure that's on there. Do not run any of our data logging cables, wires, on top of a coil, spark plug wires, or anything that may draw high current. Um, always make sure you have properly grounded data loggings and ignition systems that cut down on the noise. All of our stuff is shielded to the best of ability to help combat noise. So basically, if you could just terminator caps, avoid spark plug wires and coils and ignition systems, you should never have a problem. If you do pick up a noise on the VNet, you will also experience flatlining. Say like you run one of our cables across um, ignition coil, it may start reading across and just flatline. Um, you had a question, sir? Or, oh, sorry. Um, so basically, how the modules work, they're very simple. They daisy chain together. It's all modular. So as you go to add sensors, you just kind of snap them together. So they'll snap together just like this. And they can basically piggyback on top of each other. When you're all said and done, you cap the end of it, the appropriate end. Here's an example of an EGT box. It has a T. It too has computer inside here telling the system what it is and it has one of these pass-through connectors. It is a disconnect in there if you've got to pull the head and you need to basically maintenance the motor. You don't want to sit there with a 916 wrench and undo eight EGT probes so we give you a quick disconnect. This is the only way this will plug in with the pass-through connector plugging into the system like this. If you ever do it like this, which I'll see at the racetrack a lot, it will not work. You're going to lose the proper termination. So what we try to do when you get it from us, we always kind of try to plug it in for you. That way you know that's the way it's supposed to be. Always the pass-through connector goes on the bus from the data logger. Here's an example of kind of, of a full system. So the majority of our data loggers has a harness, be an IQ3 Sportsman V300, that goes out from the RPM port and picks up drive shaft, engine RPM, clutch, uh, power, and maybe a button to start the recording. Here's your VNet port right here on the right hand side. That's going to have an expansion cable going out to the engine bay and all your modules are stacked together. The very end, terminator cap. Terminator cap again um, are these little 
blue guys right here. So they're marked blue if it's VNet. VNet is always blue. If you have shock travels and you plug it in on the blue connectors, you could interrupt data. Black connectors go with black connectors, blue go with blue. What kind of issues could you have if you didn't have the cap on there? Okay, if you don't properly terminate the CAN bus, it could at randomly at any point start flatlining. It'll read through and just shut down. That's because it's a loss of signal. It, d it can't communicate back to the logger. Okay. Um, so, let's see, I think the next step was, I should get back to the toolbar here. I think I missed a few, my apologies. Very good, very good. Uh, I highly advise to you to not do more than six. Um, you can zip tie the base of them together to help prevent the bowing. Um, if you are going to run a string of modules, I'm going to advise you to put a small pigtail between the two, a small extension to break up the stress on the pins and the connectors. In a racing application, we want to treat this as best as possible to support all of our connections so we don't have issues down the way. No, because the problem is there's too many applications and too many configurations that we would have to stock so many different deals. So we kind of leave it up to the racer for you guys to properly mount it in your application to what you feel best. Because it looks kind of cheesy when you get these all zip tied to the Exactly. Mm -hmm. Is there a stick on one that you can actually stick to a panel and just wear a wire tag to it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, well, the thing is, is we, you know, it's one of those things that we can have a couple different solutions and somebody says, no, oh, that won't work for me. And it's very hard to accommodate all the different applications. So we always leave it up to the racer to best suit their needs. Um, okay, well, real quick here. Um, I think I want to, because we're starting to run out of time here. I want to go ahead and maybe do one of our first raffles. Uh, what we've got here, raffling off today, is basically our Dash App module. So if any of you guys have a VNet system, we now offer a Bluetooth module. The Bluetooth module will allow you to plug this into anywhere into your VNet bus and it'll transmit anything you're monitoring on your race pack system to your iPhone, iPad, or Android device. Now, to be honest with you, when we first came out with this, I said, oh well, yeah, it's kind of gimmicky. And then I used it for the first time. I fired up my car and I started streaming the data from my Roadster to my phone. I'm getting all the data right to my phone. I'm setting the idle. I'm setting the barrel valve. Uh, set the fuel flow. I'm looking at all my EGTs and right to my phone, less than a second, it connects and I'm getting all that data while we're running. I didn't have to go back and forth looking at the gauges, running back, just the idle. I just streamed it right to my phone looked at my phone, did everything I need to do, verified, shut down. Prevented me from having to just take time and just keep checking everything. I was doing a live telemetry. I cut all that out by streaming it to my phone. It was very, very handy. I don't run my car now today without running my Dash app now. I know it sounds, you know, gimmicky, but once you use it, you'll never put it down again. So. Mm -hmm. uh, is it advised to use, say, a iPad or anything like that in the vehicle and use that as a dash? Well, that's your call. Can you do that? Absolutely. Do I want to send my $700 iPad down the racetrack? I don't know if it's going to hold up. But the $700 dash from Racepack is fine? 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Just throw that out there. Yeah. We, we built our dash to survive the extreme environment. I don't know if I want to send my iPad down through there. Does it, does it so. take up another channel? No, it does not. All it is is it's just a broadcast device. It broadcasts over Bluetooth. Can somebody else see my information? No, it is password protected. So when you first sync it up and you set it up to stream, you can set a password to it so nobody else can get into it. What's the cost? Right now, to the end of the year, it's uh, $150. So I want to go ahead and raffle off this. Yes, Chris? <laughs> Any um, OS or Apple phone or Android phone it will work on. The Race Pack program will work on a Mac. It is PC based, so you have to buy a, a Windows emulator for your Mac. Cameron runs a Mac and right now, and he runs his Race Pack program on it, no problem. How do you like it? It's fine. It's just you just run the parallel. I have Windows on it. Are we going to see more of this wireless stuff between MSD and Race Pack? Is it coming? You betcha. This is stage one. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, believe me, you're, we're, we're definitely heading that way. We're going to have a lot of products down the road that's going to be more wireless. Um, sure, screenshot it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll like it. Um, it. Basically, as long as you have a VNet system and one of the latest versions of our software, plug it into your system, sync it to your phone. Anytime that thing is on, you get live data to your phone. It's really, really cool. You don't want to do it at 170 miles per hour. Well, Bluetooth does have a limit of about 25 feet to 30 feet. So as soon as that gets out of range from your cell phone, you'll lose it. So if, if you put the phone with the vehicle and strap it in, like you're going to do, it's going to be there the whole time. So I don't know if I want to send my iPad down the racetrack. <laughs> Yeah, but my Samsung's a lot cheaper, so I mean, it's <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that would be great on warranty, right? Take it back to uh, <laughs> the phone place and <laughs> just caught on fire. Oh, I don't want to be the bad guy. You got the microphone, buddy. All right, yeah, I could be the one good guy. All right, so for the first Dash app, White ticket. Three, five, eight, seven, two, zero, one. Wrong number. Got it? <laughs> Just there, okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, we got one more dash app here. Module. We can place the order for you. We don't have them here to take home, regretfully, but I do uh, have them at the shop ready to go. All right, second ticket. It is three, five, eight, seven, one, nine, two. Got it, nice. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, now we got some hats. A couple of hats, not uh, not dash apps, but at least something. Better than poking out sharks. All right. I have three, five, eight, seven, one, six, eight. All right, there you go, sir. All right, last hat giveaway.
What's that? Oh. Okay. Last hat giveaway here is three, five, eight, seven, one, nine, one. All right. It's nicer than my hat. There you go, sir. Thank you. All right. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we're out of time for any of uh, my presented stuff, so I want to open it up to any questions you may have regarding your system, installations, problems maybe you have enough the racetrack, anything like that. Yes, sir? The smoothing scale. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. What's the benefit to that? Why would you, you have to do it every run by the looks of it. Uh, if you want it to stay the same for every run, you always want to save it in your configuration file. Whenever you save it in your configuration file, it will always be the same for every download afterwards. You can't just slide it all the way to the end to make it smooth and then have it the same all the time? Mm -hmm. You can. As long as you do it in your configuration file, the setup file, it will always remain the same for every download. If you do it in the downloaded run and you save it, it will be there for the run, but your next download will not save it. How do you, how do you, how do you okay. So if 